What is up guys, welcome to a new video. And today we're going to discover three simple exercises and tools that you can use to improve your vision. Because a lot of people were super fascinated by my last post. And um, like I got a lot of messages of people actually asking me about if I have like tools or like if I have exercises that I can recommend because that's something that I've come across a lot like in my career that people still think like even in the year 2023 where there is a lot of information on the web that people still think they can't improve their visual system that they can't improve their eyesight so a lot of people think oh like I'm either I don't know like born with good vision or with bad vision and um, honestly like there is a lot of evidence, there's a lot of research that you can actually train your eyes and improve your eyes. So it doesn't matter if you're an athlete, if you're just a regular person that like wants to improve their vision, maybe you're tired of wearing glasses. The three things that I'm gonna share with you today are pretty much universal for everyone and everyone can use these three tools or exercises on a daily basis to actually improve their eyesight. One thing I have to mention, though, is that vision is something very complex. And there's definitely a lot more to it than maybe just doing these three things that I'm going to share with you today. So I definitely want to um, give you a little disclaimer that when I work one-on-one -on -one with people, I assess the visual system first. So I look at different visual skills. I look at how the eyes are moving. And then based on these different assessments, I will then give them a tailor-made visual training protocol that they can then do because one thing that we can forget is that the way we move our eyes can actually impact specific regions in the brain so what that can oftentimes do it can actually help people feel better in general so i talked about this in my last video about the fact that our eyes are actually our primary sensory input system so our eyes actually send us most of our information about our environment, like what's happening around us. And that's also why oftentimes when you're including these visual drills that you will probably notice that maybe you're starting to feel better. So maybe you're in a better mood. Maybe you feel less anxious. Like there's a lot of pros to actually doing these daily vision drills that I'm going to share with you. And it's not only the emotional component that can actually improve, it can actually also impact your overall movement. That is also why what I would recommend you do is I want you to actually assess your neck range of motion before you start doing these drills. And then actually, after you've done the drill, you want to reassess how flexible you are around your neck. And the reason why we use the neck for these specific drills is because the eyes contribute a lot to how flexible the neck muscles are. So a lot of people that suffer from neck tightness and neck stiffness, they oftentimes have issues with their visual system. That's why what I want you to do is I want you to first test your neck range of motion, which I'm going to um, guide you through in just a second. Then I want you to do the drill and then I want you to actually reassess how flexible you are around your neck. And I would say most people, they actually would respond positively to these vision drills. But there's also some people, specifically people that have a history of head injuries, concussions, that sometimes actually will respond negatively to these vision drills. And that's the case, what I was referring to earlier, that some people actually have to be a little bit cautious with some of the vision drills, and they would actually have to work with a specialist that actually assesses the visual system and actually gives them a tailor-made protocol, just like I do in my daily practice with my athletes. But I'm pretty sure that a lot of you will actually respond positively to the drills that I'm going to share with you today. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I actually want you to do is I want you to assess your neck range of motion. And the easiest way where you can actually do that is you just want to stand up and you just want to see how far can you rotate your neck left and right okay what you don't want to do is you don't want to like extend your neck too much so you actually want to keep the chin parallel to the floor and just go right and left and just see and notice how far you can go okay you can also 
actually have someone film you from the back or take pictures from the back just to see how far you can actually move. Right, so let's get into our first drill, which are near and far jumps. So what you wanna do here is you actually want to get a pencil and you want to keep your eyes fixated on the top of the pencil, okay? So it's basically just the tip of the pencil that you wanna keep both eyes focused on. You can have it around 30 centimeters away from you. I'm German, so I don't know the exact measurement in inches. So if you're not sure, just Google it. Um, but it really doesn't matter. You can also go closer, you can go further away. The main aspect of this drill is we want to shift our gaze, our focus, from a near object to a far object, okay? And the far object could be like three meters away, it could be 30 meters away, it doesn't really matter as long as it's a target that you, that you can actually see, okay? The most important part is we want to, when we're switching, we want to see the object clearly. So when you're looking at your target in the near distance, you want to see that object clearly, and then once you're switching to the object which is in the distance, that needs to be clear too. So once you see the object in the distance clearly, then you shift back, and then you shift back to the object in the distance. So it's basically just this near and far movement. You just basically jump from the object close to you, the object far away from you. And what's important here is you want to actually have the object that you're looking at in the distance straight in line with the object that you have closer to you, okay? So easy tip that I can give you is start at around nose height and then just pick a target that's in the same straight line, okay? So these are gonna be your near and far jumps. So one question that I get oftentimes is, what am I gonna do if I have glasses? So you could technically take the glasses off as long as you can see the object in the distance clearly. So this is usually the way I do it. You can also technically do it with the glasses, but I would suggest you just try out whichever one feels better for you and whichever one actually improves your neck range of motion better because that will also be a good indicator as to how your nervous system and how your brain perceives the stimulus that we just set. Okay, so that's the coolest thing about working brain-based and like stimulating the brain. We can always get instantaneous feedback off the nervous system, off the brain. Okay, so you want to do this for around, I would say, 30 to 60 seconds. Again, it's a very individual thing. Like some people need to do it a little bit longer. Some people need to do it a little bit shorter. But I would suggest anywhere between 30 and 60 seconds will be a good time frame. Okay, so once you finish the drill, you want to go ahead again and retest how your neck feels. And for me, just by doing few jumps, I actually already feel a little bit looser around my neck, which is pretty cool. Okay, so this is the first exercise. The second exercise is not really an exercise. It's more a lifestyle tool that I can recommend to you, which is look in the distance as much as you can, okay? And what's important here is you don't have to necessarily sit on your window and just look out the window for an hour straight. This can be something that you do habitually, okay? So for example, what I do here in my office is I sit right on the window and I just try to, during my work, just keep my eyes in the distance regularly, okay? so. Every, I would say, like 10 minutes, I actually view and I actually look into the distance just for a few seconds. It can be like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. It doesn't necessarily have to be really long. And what that does, it actually relaxes a lot of our eye muscles. And research has also shown that people that actually spend more time outdoors actually have better eyesight, like significantly better eyesight than people that just basically work in an office or like are working on a desk all day and just looking at their screen. And if this is you, it's really not a big problem. It's really more so about the, the habits that you adapt. So it's just important to find ways, like maybe during your lunch break, you wanna go outside, like just low behavior tools that you want to include to improve your overall eyesight, okay? So spend as much time outdoors as possible. And if that is not possible, then at least 
make sure that you're actually able to look into the distance as much as possible throughout the day. Okay, so that's point number two. Point number three is actually, again, an exercise. So what's important to understand about the eyes is that each eye is attached to six extraocular muscles, so six eye muscles. And it's really important that we actually move the eyes and actually use these eye muscles because it's the same, like these muscles actually function the same as regular muscles. They can also get tight and strained. So imagine as if I'm holding my biceps, I'm contracting my biceps all day like this. Do you think my biceps will get tight? Of course, because like I'm always in that shortened range of motion. And it's the same thing with our eyes. If our eyes constantly are looking at a close target, like a computer, like they will just get tight. And here's an interesting exercise that you can actually do to move all six different eye muscles on each eye. Okay, and I call this exercise the big H. Because the problem is, let's say we're moving the eyes up and right, we have different eye muscles that are actually doing the job. So what's important is that we're actually moving the eyes into all possible ranges of motion to actually stimulate next to actually move these six eye muscles on the right eye and on the left eye. And to set up for this, I would suggest you just use your thumbs. And what you want to do is you want to stretch out your thumbs like this. And what we want to do, we're going to start with the right side first. So you're going to go outside and you want to keep your gaze fixated on your thumb. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to write a H with both hands. Okay. And I'm actually moving as much as I can into the ranges that my visual system allows me to. So, okay, so I'm actually going all the way towards the edge up to a point where I feel a nice little stretch and strain on your eyes. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just doing this letter H and I'm just moving my eyes. What's important here is you want to keep the head fixated so the head doesn't move you're just doing this and you're just moving your eyes so only the eyes are following the target okay and again after you've done this you want to actually again reassess how your neck feels and again my neck feels a little bit looser after doing that okay so a nervous system is now threatened by that exercise my nervous system my brain actually quote unquote life schedule okay and this one again you can do around 30 to 60 seconds you can do this also multiple times a day so usually what i would suggest is doing each of these exercises at least three times a day for around 30 to 60 seconds that's a general protocol that i feel comfortable sharing so again just Experiment with it, see how you feel, see how you notice, maybe also the changes in your emotional state, maybe in your range of motion, and just your overall brain and body state, okay? So that's always really important when we're actually training and addressing the visual system is to really get the feedback off the nervous system and see how well the brain actually likes the specific drill. Okay, so again, just to put everything into a nutshell, the first drill were the near and far jumps. So you pick a target that's close to you, target in distance, and you just switch back and forth. The most important part here, again, the object needs to be clear. And then you switch back, okay? So that's exercise number one. Exercise number two is just looking in the distance, okay? Just relaxing the eyes and looking into the distance and actually getting as much daylight exposure and actual distance exposure as much as possible. And then exercise number three was the big H. So again, just move the eyes into all different quadrants and just make sure to keep the head still and only the eyes are moving. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. If you want to learn more, we actually have a two-day course coming up. So this is going to be an online course for athletes, 
for therapists, for coaches that want to learn more about neural training and how you can actually apply some of these exercises. We're going to talk more about different assessments, how to assess the visual system, the vestibular system. We're going to talk about how to integrate that with biomechanical work, so movement work, strength training, and so on and so forth. So that's going to be a really cool course. So definitely check that one out. And again, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Definitely keep training those eyes. Again, the visual system is so underrated and so many people are just absolutely neglect our visual system and our eyes so definitely make sure to get those eyes moving just like any other muscle in the body okay i'll see you guys in the next video